Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this webinar about dynamic observability and the quest for real-time data in cloud-native applications. My name is Odette, and this is Sharon, and we are happy to have you with us. So who are we? Uh, Sharon is our director of product marketing here at Lookout. She likes to practice yoga and makes sure not to take life too seriously. Trying. Odette is our VP of product here in Rookout, and he's a true believer in having fun while working together. And he's also the founder of the TLV board game meetup group. Before we are going to start the quest of real time data, code level data, and dynamic observability, I want to take a step back and see where we are today. So, organizations are trying to reduce cost to optimize cost. They are looking for agility. They're looking for elasticity. And this is why they're moving their applications and infrastructure to the cloud. Uh, adoption of cloud native applications and technologies such as microservices, containers, dynamic uh, orchestration, DevOps are booming. And we expect to see in 2024 that 70% out of all applications are going to be cloud native. In 2020, it used to be only 10% cloud native applications. And this is according to 2021 IDC. So um, these big trends brings many challenges together with it. And we see and hear from our customers that the most common challenges are optimizing costs, modernizing application, breaking down monoliths, rebuilding them as microservices, and adopting new tools and new methodologies to support this en entire new ecosystem. Um, so we invest a lot of uh, developer uh, manpower and money, and we face those challenges. But still, we find ourselves worried, worried from outages, just like the recent log for shell one. Um, those kinds of outages can be devastated for organization, and we're trying to avoid or at least minimize um, as much as possible. And this is why we find ourselves investing more and more in observability. So the state of observability VMware 2021 state that over a third of organizations already invested in observability solutions. In addition, we see that another third is going to adapt and maintain observability pipeline in the near future. And although those numbers are pretty high, it's not surprising at all. And this is because uh, cloud native applications are very, very dynamic and complex. And the only way to maintain their quality is to be able to get logs, traces, metrics on the fly and in any time and if possible, to visualize them. So you can have instant understanding of the state of your application. So further highlighting um, the interest around observability, we see here that Gartner stated 2021 as the year of observability. And we see, um, again, they highlight the fact that observability is not equal equal monitoring, meaning it's so much more. And we're going to, to see uh, and discuss it in the next few slides. So observability, um, it's in the title of uh, the webinar and it's the title of this slide. And I probably said uh, too many times <laughs> observability, uh, but it's really important that we are all in the same page of what is the definition of observability? So I'm going to hand over to you then so you can share with us. So what is observability? Observability is defined as our ability to see and understand inside the application. When the application is having a problem, we want to be notified about it. We want to be alerted. And we want to be able to troubleshoot 
and get to the root cause of the problem as quickly as possible. Traditionally, the uh, observability tools are divided into three pillars, although, of course, uh, as you will see on some of the logos on this page, many of them uh, solve problems that are in more than one pillar. Um, these tools need to uh, provide logs, collect logs, uh, deliver them uh, to developers and let them see what happened as the application was running. They need to collect traces, which give us additional context and tell us uh, which of the dozens or hundreds of microservices or serverless functions were involved uh, in a specific flow and uh, the interconnection between them. And they need to collect and aggregate metrics that allow us to measure uh, quantifiable data over time and understand the behavior of our application. Now, these tools are very popular. Um, most companies who develop uh, cloud native applications use at least one of them. Uh, but these tools also have uh, some key limitations uh, that we need to be able to identify and address. The first limitation of traditional observability is context. When you only collect logs uh, without context, you can understand that something happened and you may have uh, all of the uh, local variables that tell you what was going on at the time, but you need the context in order to be able to understand what happened just a minute before that, just a millisecond before that. And also, if you're running a complex and distributed application with uh, hundreds uh, or thousands of nearly identical uh, services, uh, you need to be able to understand which one of them was involved, which one of them was uh, seeing that uh, uh, special condition in order to get the full picture of what was going on. And displaying that full picture means printing additional logs and collecting additional data, which brings us to, to another challenge. Yes, indeed you're right to that. Um, context is the number one problem, uh, but adding context, printing more log lines, bring us to the second one, second highest one, which is super high cost. Um, when we lack context, we find ourselves adding code, wait for another uh, redeployment. So for sure, we are wasting developer time. But in addition to that, we are also paying a lot of money. We're paying for log collection. We're paying for log aggregation. We're paying for um, log uh, ingestion. Uh, and we're paying for log services. And on top of all that, we're also paying in application performance because when we're printing more log lines, the application performance is dropping. So paying all around is never good. Companies are in constant uh, strive to reduce costs to optimize costs because they want to be competitive. Okay, so let's look at a very strange uh, phenomena from business uh, perspective. On one hand side, we see that we lose $3.4 million. This is the average annual cost of limiting the log data. Where is it coming from? So first of all, when we have an issue and we don't know where it's coming from, then we need to reproduce it. To reproduce it, we need a setup in place, and this setup is usually very expensive. So this is one time. Second time, if we're not solving the issue fast enough, then we have a problem where uh, we have our customer experience dropping, we have uh, a problem of losing actual money, transition that are not there if the application is done. So this is second time. And third time, we have our developers that we're shifting uh, their original task, which is to build code with new features. Instead, they're occupied with finding bugs, resolving those issues. And unfortunately, these tasks can take days and sometimes even weeks. So this is one time when we're not logging enough. On the other side, we see that the average annual cost of collecting log data that is not uh, being used is a lose of $1.8 million. Um, where is this coming from? It's coming from logging FOMO, fear of missing out. And I think we can all relate to that. 
uh, developers are in, in fear that when the need is there, they will not have the debug data that they need. So they're pushing for, for storing the highest log velocity possible. And those logs are accumulate to high volume and obviously to very high expensive. So losing on one side, losing on the other side, there must be a better way. And the third challenge we face as we try to use traditional observability tools is the challenge of the black box. Traditional observability tools uh, ask us to add more code and to change the application every time we want to fetch additional logs. Uh, and engineers want to see the code and want to uh, add code dynamically so that they can get a look into the black box. Um, when we work with our customers, they uh, try to address this challenge using some traditional methods. Some of them try local debugging or command line debugging, uh, which is basically seeing the code on your own desktop and running it in a way that will stop uh, whenever the application hits a breakpoint. And then you get to see a full view of the uh, local variables, which is uh, what's happening inside the box. But in cloud native applications, you are not always able to reproduce the issue or to run the same application locally on your desktop. And even if you do, in an application that is supposed to run dozens or hundreds of microservices, stopping everything or stopping one microservice will just not help you reproduce uh, the same issue. Uh, other customers uh, rely on logging and tracing, and then they face the challenges that we've already mentioned uh, in this presentation, the lack of context and the need to uh, pay a lot of money for uh, storing and ingesting logs. And, and of course, there is a performance hit that the, the application uh, suffers when uh, printing too many log lines and collecting too many traces. Um, and this all returns to the root cause where uh, printing those additional logs, adding more traces means changing code, waiting for the application to build and redeploy again, waiting for a restart. And it means waiting for, time, uh, for a significant time before you get to see the additional data. Some customers try remote debugging, which is between a challenge and a completely impossible task when you are trying to debug things like Kubernetes and AWS Lambda and similar technologies. Uh, and too many of our customers fall back to crossing fingers, praying and deploying to production blindly, which means that you know there will be a bug the following day, you know you will need to deliver a hotfix or rollback and have a lot of trouble and, and inefficiency. So this situation is just not good enough. Traditional observability tools help us see inside the application and help us solve problems, but there has to be a better, more efficient way. And happily there is. Uh, if you have heard about uh, tools that describe themselves as uh, production debugging tools or live debugging tools, uh, you may have uh, already heard about uh, this technology. Uh, and we are here to dig deeper into these new methods and describe dynamic observability tools. So introducing <laughs> dynamic observability. Traditional observability is a way to ask questions. We set uh, and predefine in advance a uh, few parameters that we care about and we're going to get beautiful dashboards and alerts when something happens with them, but it's not real time. If something that is not there wasn't defined in advance, we're not going to get it. With dynamic observability, we ask questions in real time and we get answers in real time. So the magic, the mechanism behind dynamic observability is what we call non-breaking breakpoints. Um, non-breaking breakpoints are disruptive um, technology uh, that allow developers to get traces, logs, and metrics on the fly. They can uh, instrument um, a log line, switch it on. They can get a debug snapshot with local variables, with stack traces. And with that, they can really change their workflow. They don't need to wait anymore. It's instantly there for them. 
Um, so this is dynamic um, um, observability. Now this dynamic uh, instrumentation powered by bytecode manipulation is happening with the code, it's running with the code. And this is why it's instantly. This is why you don't need to wait. This is why the data is in real time and it is there for you. Once we have this new debug data, we can pipeline it to a set of observability tools that are already there, your favorite tool, you can choose and analyze it all together. So in a way, if you think about it, Dynamic observability helps you close the gap between black box debugging and white box debugging. Or from another perspective, it helps you close the gap between dev and DevOps. On the left-hand side, we see the way in which a developer would want to debug. A developer would want to see the code, to work in dev environment, uh, to print logs, and, and to see what's going on uh, as the application is running. On the right-hand side, you see a DevOps engineer who wants to look at the application from the outside, who wants to see a dashboard of um, graphs and metrics to tell him what's going on. And dynamic observability actually lets these two specialists use the same tool and each of them benefit from the other specialists uh, work with it. A developer can work, can look at the application from the outside, and see dashboards and metrics and actually debug in production, which is something that more, not many of the developers even dare to think about. And on the flip side, a DevOps engineer can uh, have the benefits of seeing the code, of working in context, of working locally without the impact of uh, hurting the, the application while actually running on a live environment. And in the middle of those, you will find Rookout and you will find a dynamic observability as the way to, to make these two worlds uh, meet. So let's recap what we've seen as the value of dynamic observability. Dynamic observability gives engineers context in real time without waiting, without changing the app, without restarting. It means that you can solve bugs much, much faster, even in very dangerous and, and uh, complex environments such as cloud native production environment. Uh, and when you solve problems faster, you get uh, happier customers and you have more time to deliver more business value, uh, which increases your efficiency and the efficiency of your team. You can do that without paying too much for additional logs and traces, without paying more money for uh, storage and ingestion, and without uh, suffering the performance hit. Uh, and the bottom line, and I think that's the part we all here at Google really care about, you get happier developers, happier dev DevOps engineers uh, who are more satisfied, who can solve problems faster, who can work on the interesting business impact rather than uh, debugging unsolvable problems. So we hope you found this interesting and we hope you are now curious to try dynamic observability uh, for yourself. Um, thank you for watching this webinar. And if you have any further questions or comments, feel free to reach out. We're happy to, to hear from you.